with Ukraine demanding more tank supplies. Western allies Germany and the US are reportedly committing more shipments of the armoured vehicles. Finland calls for a pause on trilateral talks with Turkey over its NATO bid, after Helsinki hinted at joining the alliance without Sweden. The European Commission wants to increase the return of irregular migrants as it presents plans for a so-called new operations strategy. As international reluctance to send military artillery to the war begins to erode, it's reported that US President Joe Biden's administration is poised to approve sending M1 Abrams tanks to Ukraine. That's according to two US officials who told Reuters but the White House and the Pentagon both declined to confirm that these high-tech armored vehicles would be sent. I have nothing to announce today in terms of the M1s. I think, as we've said all along, we continue to have a very robust dialogue with Ukraine and our international allies and partners to focus on what their immediate battle term, uh, battlefield needs are now in the near term. Um, but we also have discussions about what they may need in the medium to long term, uh, and we'll continue to have those discussions. It's believed the announcement will come on Wednesday and follows reports from Germany that Berlin will approve Poland's request to transfer German-made Leopard 2 tanks to the war, saying that it would not supply Western tanks to Ukraine without any agreement with Kyiv's main allies, particularly the United States. Meanwhile, the pressure continues to mount for Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. It's not about 5 or 10 or 15 tanks. The need is greater. We are doing what's necessary every day to fill the deficit. And I thank everyone who supports us in this. However, discussions must end with decisions. Decisions on strengthening our defense against terrorists. Kiev expects the fighting to intensify and says these tanks would provide more protection and mobility. Finland's presence is calling for a pause on trilateral talks with Turkey over its NATO bid together with Sweden. Well, it's after the Finnish foreign minister said Helsinki was thinking about joining the military alliance without Stockholm, according to the Washington Post. The announcement also follows Turkey's move to stall Sweden's bid over several issues, not least the latest protest in the Swedish capital, which saw a Koran being burnt. The latest hold-up raises doubts about the two Nordic nations becoming NATO members together. I want to urge for calm in this process because I want to return to functioning talks on the issues where we agreed that we have made progress. Sweden, Finland and Turkey have a trilateral agreement and it's going well. It's quite obvious that we have different legislation in our countries. I think, as someone said, I would have two thoughts in my head. We are fully committed to Swedish freedom of expression and we are very keen to complete NATO membership together with Finland. Both Sweden and Finland launched their bid to join NATO when Russia invaded Ukraine nearly a year ago. But protests in Sweden and Turkey's persistence that Stockholm should distance itself from the Kurdish Workers' Party are stalling progress. The European Commission wants to increase the return of irregular migrants, presenting plans on Tuesday for a so-called new operations strategy. It says that only 21% of irregular migrants go back to their countries of origin, even if they get a negative decision on their asylum request by member states. It's necessary that immediately after, member states need to do the readmission request for that country so that they can have the decision so that we can actually fly these people back to the country of origin. That's why it's so important that we work together. Member states can't solve it alone, but Commission can't solve it alone either. The European Commission is concerned that last year there were 924,000 applications for asylum, an increase of 50% compared to 2021. The countries with the highest number of requests were France, Germany, Spain and Austria. Some member states argue that the problem is not all of them are entitled to international protection and put too much pressure on the asylum system. Considering they're economic migrants, a network of NGOs say there are other solutions. 
One would be increasing channels for legal migration, which have actually been declining in Europe over the last 20 years. So those are people who may want to come to Europe to take up work, and indeed at the same time Europe needs workers. Brussels says it's willing to increase its work with countries of origin that respect human rights. But Bullard says it would be better to focus resources on cooperation and development. The real obstacle is in the country of origin and due to the unpopularity and re resentment about the efforts and the pressure from Europe to return people, which is not a priority for many of those countries, particularly in a context where they're benefiting from remittances, uh, flows um, of finance, a uh, fund and knowledge and expertise that comes from their nationals having been moved abroad. The new plans will be discussed by EU countries in Stockholm later this week. Christopher Pitches, Euronews, Brussels. The list of fugitive mafia boss Matteo Messina Denaro's accomplices is getting longer. This video shows the capture of Andrea Bonafede on Tuesday, a surveyor who lent Denaro his identity. He was arrested by a Carabinieri special unit on charges of mafia association after prosecutors said they were concerned the suspect could escape and tamper with evidence. Vincenzo and Antonio Lupino have also ended up in jail. The pair were sons of Giovanni Lupino, the man who accompanied the mafia boss to the Palermo clinic, where the Carabinieri were waiting for him. A hidden but completely empty room was also discovered in Vincenzo's house. In Palermo, police have also arrested seven people belonging to the Rocca Mezzomonreale Mafia gang, one of the original Cosa Nostra families, and have seized a written mafia code, a document prosecutors say is of great interest. War in space is inching closer, with attacks and cyber attacks on satellites increasing, something the EU's top diplomat says is a serious cause for concern. Speaking at the opening of the European Space Conference in Brussels on Tuesday, Joseph Barre said that one of those attacks was a clear sign at the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. 24 hours before Moscow invaded, the space telecommunication network used by the Ukrainian army was targeted by a cyber attack. And the malicious code used managed to bring down parts of the network. El espacio se ha convertido en un... Space has become a strategic area. I won't say a battlefield, but a place where satellites are or can be targeted. We are critically dependent on information that is received or bounced back from satellites. Most of our civilian and military infrastructure depends on the satellite system. According to Beret, there are 5,500 satellites currently in orbit, with around 10% used by the world's military. And space is now defined as a key area by the world's largest military alliance, NATO. Risks could also come from the physical destruction of satellites. Russia recently destroyed one of its satellites with a ground launch missile. If it did it to one of its own satellites, it can do it to any other satellite tomorrow. So, we have to be concerned about the safety of what we put up in space. And this also brings with it other dangers. The destruction of a satellite fills space with small metallic particles. They are little, but at the speed at which they go, they are tremendously dangerous. The European Commission will present a new space initiative in March, which aims to guarantee security both for people and for the continent's critical infrastructure. Christopher Pitches, Euronews, Brussels. New Zealand's 41st Prime Minister has been sworn in. Chris Hipkins has promised a back-to-basics approach, focusing on the economy and what he described as a pandemic of inflation. The 44-year-old will have less than nine months before contesting a tough general election, with opinion polls indicating his Labour Party is trailing its Conservative opposition. The new appointment followed the unexpected resignation of Jacinda Ardern last week 
saying she didn't have enough energy left to continue in the job.